Good morning. My name is Yana Najjar. I'm a resident in internal medicine at the Cleveland Clinic. I'd like to thank the KCA Organizing Committee for the opportunity to present our case. And today we'll be talking about um, novel immunotherapy in the setting of metastatic renal cell carcinoma. I have no disclosures. So our case begins with a 53-year-old gentleman who for the past several months had been having small volume hemoptysis. He was otherwise entirely asymptomatic. He had a CT chest done at the outside hospital and that showed some right hyaluronopathy. The largest node measured 27 by 26 millimeters. He had a biopsy done at the outside hospital also and that was non-diagnostic. We did not have access to those reports. You can see here imaging of the CT abdomen and pelvis in our patient. He had a sizable mass that was pretty classic in appearance for renal cell carcinoma. History-wise, this gentleman had a past medical history of dyslipidemia, which was well controlled with simvastatin. He had CAD. He had required a PCA to the LAD several years prior. He had never been a smoker, he didn't drink alcohol, and he had no occupational exposure. His family history was not contributory. This gentleman initially underwent a laparoscopic left radical nephrectomy. Pathology showed clear cell carcinoma, grade three out of four. Uh, there was evidence of invasion into the sinus fat and the renal vein, and also some evidence of lymphovascular invasion. And at that point, this gentleman was started on sunitinib, 50 milligrams a day, on the standard schedule of one month on and two weeks off of therapy. He did very well uh, for two years, but at that point, imaging did show evidence of uh, progressive disease, specifically in the liver, multiple intra-abdominal and intra-pelvic lymph nodes, um, and in the nephrectomy bed. And at this point, he was started on phase one trial of NEVO with sunitinib, pazopinib, or ipilimumab. And he was randomized to the NEVO and IPI arm. You can see here baseline measurements. This gentleman's total tumor burden was 10.8 centimeters. And six weeks after the initiation of therapy, this had increased by 1.2 centimeters. So he had an increase in 11% of his total tumor burden. Toxicity at this point was grade two constipation, grade two anemia. He did endorse some fatigue, and he was starting to have lower GI bleeding, which we presumed was on hemorrhoids, as these were present on physical exam. Subjectively, he did tell us that he was feeling a lot better. His appetite was back at baseline, his energy level was pretty good, and he had had a subcutaneous flank tumor that he felt was shrinking. You can see here uh, comparisons. Uh, baseline imaging and then after six weeks in the left nephrectomy bed and the mass in the nephrectomy bed is appreciably larger on imaging. The question at this point became what to do next. Should we take him off of trial with Nevo and Ipi and put him on a third line agent? Should we stop his treatment entirely and enroll him in hospice? Or should we continue treatment with his current therapy? It was decided to continue this patient on Epi and Nevo. And eight weeks later, so two weeks after he had had his third dose of treatment, his toxicity was getting worse. He was still having grade two constipation and fatigue. His appetite was pretty much gone. He was losing weight rapidly. And uh, he was still having lower GI bleeding much more frequently. And it was causing him uh, grade two anemia. Again, it was presumed to be from hemorrhoids at this point. He was also having LFT abnormalities. His ALT, AST, and ALKFOS were all elevated. We wanted to further work up this GI bleeding, especially in the setting of the LFT abnormalities. We were concerned for colitis, so he had a colonoscopy. And at that point, there was a four centimeter mass. 15 biopsies were taken. Only one out of the 15 showed a very small focus of clear cell carcinoma. His LFT abnormalities improved quite rapidly on 40 milligrams of prednisone a day. And overall, he started to feel better. He improved clinically. Again, you can see the measurements here at baseline. And then at six weeks, as we had said, a tumor had initially grown to 12 centimeters total burden. 
At 12 weeks, though, you can see that his total burden is down to 9.3 centimeters, giving him 14% reduction. At 18 weeks, he had total uh, volume reduction to 7.7 .7 centimeters, bringing him down to 29% compared to his baseline. At 16 weeks, prior to the patient being scheduled to go to the OR for resection of this uh, large polyp that we had just discussed, he had a colonic intussusception and he had to emergently be taken to the OR for a partial left colectomy. And at that point, pathology showed that the clear cell carcinoma was invading the full thickness of the colonic mucosa. All of his lymph nodes were clear, six out of six had no evidence of disease. At this point, the patient is still on treatment. He is tolerating it very well. His energy is improved. His appetite is back. He put on the weight he had initially lost. He is back to working part-time, and he's back to all of his regular activities. He is uh, off of prednisone. All of his labs have normalized, and the only toxicity at his last visit, which was just under 10 days ago, was grade one anemia. Thank you for your attention.